Hi, this is Mary from marysconturi.com, and today I'm going to be doing a monotype expressionistic dark field figure in ink. I'm starting off with Speedball Professional um, Grade Ink. I'm rolling out the ink until it's a consistency of velvet. There was a couple of things left in my um, my gel plate that I'm using, uh, and I had to clean it off a little bit. But I'm rolling on the ink um, pretty evenly, and you want to make sure that you want to get a nice even coat. You can see on the left. Um, that I have a couple of leaves and flowers and stuff, and you'll see that in a different video. But I was I was experimenting with some textures um, using plants and botanical printing. I'm actually using right now to kind of map out um, the figure uh, a stump that usually used in uh, charcoal. difficult to see what I was doing um, because the gel, uh, even though it is translucent, it wasn't lit up. And I think maybe that might actually help a little bit. I know I have it on a white background, but if I had it lit from underneath, it would probably make drawing the figure a lot easier. So I ended up actually taking off some of the ink and it actually made this really nice like mid-tone and a, a nice spot to work and then I was able to use brushes and that um, that stump to actually add in to actually add in the, the ink again So one of the things about the gel uh, plate is that um, once the ink kind of dries a little bit, it comes off. It comes off really easily, and that can be equally really beneficial and also frustrating. So when I applied with the stump and brushes, the ink is actually going to be a lot thicker on the plate and on the paper when I end up printing. So this is actually Speedball Relief Ink, and normally it's used for woodblock prints or, um, or lino cut prints. I'm also using a couple of different materials like um, uh, a wire brush, which I do not actually scrape onto the plate because it will, um, it will damage it. I was just trying to make marks in the ink. And then also cotton swabs, brushes, and um, and you'll see later uh, that I actually get some some texture in the right side of the figure, um, which will end up being printed on the left side. It's a, a mirror image, but um, uh, my camera ran out of memory and I didn't get to show that part. But I was actually using that wood on the left. Um, and some of the bark to actually add some texture in um, the shadows and in the background. And one of the nice things about that is that it added some really cool effects. However, it did end up kind of leaving a couple of pieces of the loose bark in there. And if I were to do that again, I think I would use something more solid instead of the Silver Dollar Tree bark.
here I'm trying to make sure that most of the figure is actually proportionate for the most part and, um, and the model that I'm using, um, I'm trying to make sure that everything matches pretty well and adjusting as I go. So in that section there, I actually added a little bit too much ink, and um, I ended up taking it away a little bit too because um, it was very dark, and I I felt like um, I didn't get that much variation in value um, from the dark parts of the figure to the um, the background. So I ended up wiping it up a little bit, and I added a little bit of texture as well. there I'm kind of lifting up some of the um, the white and anytime you lift off ink off a plate you're lifting off um, the colored portion so um, if you're printing on white paper or purple paper or whatever color paper you're printing on when you lift off that ink off the plate and you end up printing with it that's the color the paper color is going to show through those sections using the popsicle stick to re to re-add in the ink and I was trying to use some some weeds from the yard to add in a little bit of texture as well but uh, as you can see I'm trying to get the get the little bits off of there again because it, it ended up leaving um, some of the little strings from the, the organic matter onto the plate. some spots where I actually lift off the ink and sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's not it's actually um, and then I had to go back and actually add back in more ink change the camera angle a little bit so you can actually see a little bit better the figure that I'm doing and I apologize for the right side you can't really see a whole lot of detail on the on the right the very right of the, the image but that's there's not really a whole lot missing except for the shadow area off the ink initially with the brayer um, I actually kind of like the fuzzy 
effect that it gave um, the background. They added a little bit of like cross hatching almost to the um, to the light areas. One of the problems with using um, the thicker ink is that because it was so thick, it was a little hard to get back off. When you added it back onto the figure, you kind of had to go over it a few times trying to remove the areas that you had just added in. Concentrating a lot on highlights now. texture in the ink around the hair and there I'm using that wire brush that you saw earlier Oh, I guess you can see a little bit of the, um, the texture being made here with the bark just barely on the bottom right. So I'm just pulling off the remaining highlights and trying to kind of finish it up a little bit before I pull the print. When I pull this print, um, I didn't actually make out registration marks, I um, kind of just eyeballed it a little bit. But I'm using um, Bristol board, which I've never used before for printmaking. And I actually found that it was quite nice and very smooth and it worked really well for hand printing with monotypes. So I'm using the Baron and I'm applying some pretty even pressure around the entire image and I'm making sure that I get the format of the piece the around the edges. And I'm, I'm trying to apply pretty, pretty firm pressure. And one of the nice things about the gel plate is that it actually has a little bit of a give. So it actually adds a bit more pressure to your printing than, um, than not having that. I've tried it on plexiglass and stuff by myself without a press and it's very difficult. hand printing at home, this 
is a great way to, um, to experiment with figures and drawing and portraits and anything really. Thank you for joining me today.